Hello everyone, and welcome to Introduction to R, Part 16, Dealing with Dates. So in the last two lessons, we learned various techniques for pre-processing text data and numeric data. But many data sets also contain dates and date times, which you can't treat as either strings or numeric data. You have to treat them as their own thing. So in this lesson, we're going to learn about various techniques for dealing with dates. Now I'll start just by reading in some date data that I prepared for this lesson. You can see that the data here has four different columns, which include dates in different formats. And the names of the columns I've prepared here tell you the general format of the dates for that column. So this first column is called month, day, year, because that's the format of how the date is. So this one is day, month, year. This one is a full date time, so it includes both a date and a time signature. And the last one is in year, month, day format. So this will just give us some data that we can work with using different date time related functions for this lesson. Now when you load data into R by default, it is going to be loaded in as a character. You can see that when we ran type of here, it says character. So the first thing you generally want to do when you're working with dates is to convert them into a date or date time format. One way that you can do that in R is using the as.date function. So we'll start by looking at how to do that. We'll take that first column and resave it as a date instead of a character. So we're gonna use as.date, we're passing in the first column there, which was called month, day, year. And then you have to specify the format of the date using a special string. So you say format equals, and then you specify the format. In this case, it's month slash day slash year. So we use these special characters. Percent month means the numeric month, I believe, percent day is the day, and then percent year is the year. And we include the slashes because in the format there were slashes there. And if we run that, it will match this format and load this into a date time format. So we'll do that and we'll check the type of the new column to see what the type is stored as. So it's stored as now a numeric data type instead of a character, it's double, and the, the class is date. To go more into the special format strings for dates, I'll just show a couple different formatting characters that you can use. Percent lowercase d is for the day. Percent m is for the numeric month. Percent b is for an abbreviated non-numeric month. Percent capital B is for the full month name. Percent lowercase y is for two, matching two-digit years, and percent Uppercase Y is for matching dates that have a full four-digit year in it. You can see above when we printed the dates, they do print out as full dates, but they're stored as doubles. And the reason they're stored as doubles is that under the hood, these are actually just numbers, which indicate the number of days since 1970, the first day of 1970. That's how they're stored under the hood. So if we check the underlying numeric representation of these dates with as.numeric, we'll just see a number that's the number of days since that first day that's used, 19, the first day in 1970. So next we'll just learn a few built-in R functions that are useful for doing things related to dates and times. The weekdays function will take something in date format and tell you the weekday. The months function will take it and give you the month. Sys.date will tell you what the current date is. And just date will give you the current date and time. So we'll run these and we can see that Monday, Tuesday, it's showing us the days, showing us the months. This is the current day right now. And this is the current day and time for me when I'm making this video. So the as.date function that we saw earlier is a basic tool for dealing with dates, but it doesn't handle dates that include times as well. For that, you're going to want to convert to a date time format. R contains a couple different classes for dealing with date times. 
One is called POSIX CT. The other is called POSIX LT. They're similar, but what POSIX CT does is it encodes the date and time as the number of seconds that have passed since the first day of 1970. And then POSIX LT stores date and time as a list with items like year, month, day, hour, minute, second, etc. And you can convert dates in string format to POSIX date formats using either as POSIX CT or as POSIX LT, depending on which type you want. So we'll just show how to do one of those conversions here. We're going to take the third column of the data set we loaded in earlier that included both date and time. Then we'll run as POSIX CT on that column. So this was the, the column was called date time. So then we have to pass in a format string that matches the exact format of the date time column we're trying to convert. So this is the string that will do that. Um, this is matching the day of the week, the month, the day of the month, hour, minute, second, and finally the full year. This matches the column that we made for this. So when we run this and check the type, we see that it is now stored as a double and this is, unlike the normal as.date, this double is in terms of number of seconds. And when we print them out, we can see they, they do show the, they're formatted as a full date, even with a time zone. Both of these POSIX date time formats allow for subtraction between two different dates to reveal the amount of time that has transpired between those two days. So if we say, take the second entry and first entry of that column and subtract them from each other, it'll show us how much time has passed between those two dates. So let's try that. You can also extract a variety of features from dates that are in the POSIX LT format. So we'll show some of the things you can do with that. Once you have something in that format, you can get years with dollar year. You can get months, numeric months with dollar mun. You can get the day of the week with dollar w day, the day of the month with m day, day of the year with w day or y day, hours with hour, minutes with min, seconds with sec. So that allows you to extract a lot of specific information from the dates if you need those. And it's a fairly common pre-processing task for doing analysis and predictive modeling to extract features like this from a full date time. So that's a good thing to know how to do. Now finally, we're going to take a look at the Luberdate package. It is a package in R built specifically for dealing with date times. So it just has some helpful functions for doing certain things with dates a little easier than you can in base R. So we'll start by just loading in the library Luberdate and we'll show some of the different things that it can do. Again, we'll check the head here to see the different dates we have. Now, one nice thing about Luberdate is it has some built-in functions for converting dates in string form and parsing them into date times instead of having to explicitly write out those long character matching strings. You can instead use these functions that match certain common formats. For instance, the mdy function will convert strings in month, day, year format into dates. Similarly, the dmy function will convert things that are in day, month, year format into dates. So those first two columns in our data set, we can just use these built-in functions to do that conversion. Similarly, for the last column, we can call ymd to convert those that were in year, month, day format. Unfortunately, certain columns that have very complicated formats, there isn't a built-in function that will work for it. So that third column that had a longer full date time format, we will need to give this specific format string to convert that just like we did before. And to do that, we can use this parse date time function in Luberdate if we want to. So we're going to pass in that third column, and then we're going to give the full date format to convert that one. And once we run this, all four of the columns will be converted into date time formats.
And once the data is loaded into datetime formats that Luberdate can work with, it has a variety of functions you can use to extract certain features that might be useful to you. So we'll just go through some of those. So AM, for instance, will check if the date time is in AM or PM. It gives true or false. If it's in AM, it'll return true. And if the time was in the PM range, it will return false. You can get the decimal version of the date in years using the decimal date function. You can check if something is a leap year with the leap year function. It will return true or false. You can round dates to a certain unit of time. For instance, you can run round date and say the unit is year, it will round to the nearest year. You could provide other arguments to this other than year if you wanted to. Similarly, there's a ceiling date to round dates up to the next highest of the specified unit. So in this case, we're rounding up to the next year. You can run hour to get the hours, minute to get the minutes, second to get the seconds, month for month, year for year. M day will get the day of the month. W day will get the day of the week. Y day will get the day of the year. You can also use a now to get the current date time, kind of like the built-in date function. It prints it in a bit different format, but it essentially does the same thing. Luberdate contains a lot of other tools for doing things like specifying periods of time and durations and checking whether dates lie within periods of time. We're not going to go into all that more advanced functionality, but if you need to do a lot of advanced things with dates and times, Luberdate is probably going to be what you're going to want to work with instead of trying to do everything with base R. It just has more functionality than what's available in base R. Now we know the basics of how to deal with text data, numeric data, and dates. But oftentimes when you're loading in data, you're not going to have everything you need all in a single data file. Sometimes the data you want to work with will be spread out across multiple files, and you often need some way of joining different data sets together into one larger data frame so that you can work with everything all at once. So in the next lesson, we're going to go into how to tackle that problem, which is known as data merging or joining. We'll see you again next time.